Welcome all to video 18 of sentence completion and in this video we are going to tackle questions in which we have to replace an underlined word in a context with the suitable choice. The first example that we have is an easy one and I'm sure that you will get it fast. The following text is adapted from Susan Farr's 1912 short story, Mrs. of Spring Fragments. Mr. and Mrs. Spring Fragments immigrated to the United States from China. Mrs. Spring Fragments was unaware that Mr. Spring Fragments, tired with the day's business, had thrown himself down on the bamboo city on the veranda, and that although his eyes were engaged in scanning the pages of the Chinese world, uh, his ears could not help receiving the words which were borne to him through the, the open window. The choices that we have to select from denying, entering, carrying, hearing. One of these choices has to replace the word receiving here. Now let's imagine the scene here. Mr. Spring is very tired from work and he threw himself on the seat on the veranda and he is engaged in scanning the pages. Um, scanning here means reading carefully of the Chinese world. Chinese world, it's a title because it's capitalized and italicized. So his eyes are engaged in reading and his ears couldn't help receiving the words which were born to him through the open window. Okay, what do you do with the words? What is the type of communication that you use in order to uh, get the words into your ears? Exactly, it's hearing. So the answer here is D. Why are the other choices wrong? Let's discuss. The clue actually is in the uh, expression couldn't help. Couldn't help means couldn't stop or couldn't control. So um, if I say couldn't uh, control denying, can he deny the words? Can he neglect the words? Actually, no. Why? Because they are brought to him. So it's something unwillingly done to him. He doesn't have anything to do with it. The same as entering. He does not enter the, word, the words to his ears. They are, uh, got, they are getting into his ears unwillingly because they are brought through the open window. And then it's more or less the same with C. He does not carry the words. Why? Because the words are born, are brought to him through the open window. So it's something that he has nothing to do with. The second example. The following text is from F. Scott Fitzgerald, 1925 novel, The Great Gatsby. J. Gatsby was balancing himself on the dashboard of his car with that resourcefulness of movement that is so peculiarly American that comes, I suppose, with the absence of lifting work enough and even more with the formless grace of our nervous, sporadic games. This quality was continually breaking through his punctilious manner in the shape of restlessness. The choices that we have to select from standard, prestige, characteristic, and accomplishment. Let's discuss the, the scene here. Okay, Mr. J. Gatsby was balancing himself on the dashboard of his car. He's trying to get balance um, on the dashboard of his car. With that resourcefulness of movement. What does this mean? Actually, this is the clue of the answer. The word resourcefulness means ability or skill. Okay, and it's like something in your personality. You're able to do things in a clever way. Resourcefulness of movement, meaning that he uh, has the ability to move in a clever way. That's why he make he's making balance for himself on the dashboard of his car. And um, this quality was continually 
really breaking through his punctilious manner. So it's also a, a sort of manner. It's a behavior. It's a skill. It's an ability. Okay. The word quality is ta- in this scene is talking about an ability, a skill, a trait of his personality, which is something continually showing, as it's mentioned in line three. So uh, let's discuss the answers. If I say um, standard in A, does it work? Actually, no, it doesn't work because standard means um, a measure to judge. When I say I have a standard, it means it's not something in my personality. It's something that I put for myself to judge others or other objects. So it's not working. Okay. Uh, Prestige. Is it something as prestige? Mm, Prestige means admired status. This is something that is admired by others. Actually, it's more or less physical ability, so it's not about prestige. And then we have characteristic, which works here, because characteristic means feature, trait, and skill. D, accomplishment. Accomplishment means a breakthrough, something like an achievement. And you cannot say that an achievement or an accomplishment is continually breaking through his manner because it's not a continuous process that every movement or every step that you are doing is a sort of achievement. The next a question. The following text is from Claudie McKay's 1922 poem, Morning Joy. The speaker is looking out a window and observing a walled or large area of land. If you look at this introductory line, um, the word walled is not uh, commonly used uh, among many of us. So the writer here is giving you a sort of definition of this word, large area of land. Actually, it's usually not cultivated. At night, the wide and lively stretch of walled which at high noon has basked in quiet gold. Far as the eye could see was ghostly white. Dark was the night, save for the snow's weird light. I drew the shades far down, crept into bed, hearing the cold wind moaning overhead. Through the sad pines, my soul catching its pain, went sorrowing with it across the plain. And the question is asking about the word drew, which is a verb here in the past. Okay, one more time. Let's discuss the scene. The scene is the speaker is looking out a window and observing a walled or a large area of land. At night, the wide and level stretch of walled, so it's the very large area, which at high noon has basked in quiet gold. So in in the noon, it was like in quiet gold, it's the uh, rays of the sun. Far as the eye could see was ghostly white. For him, the scene was like a ghost. Dark was the night, save for the snow's weird light. So it seems that the scene here is at night. And for him, it was like a ghostly scene. I drew the shades far down. It means that I drew the curtains on the window, crept into my bed. This is the clue for the word curtains here, that he uh, put the curtains down and then he went directly into his bed to start hearing the cold wind moaning overhead. So um, the weather outside is windy. Through the sad pines, my soul catching its pain. And it seems that the speaker is sad when sorrowing with it across the plain, across the plain, across this very large area of land. So the clues again, as we discussed, looking out a window and observing a walled or a large area of land. And as we said, mostly this large area of land is not cultivated. Um, If you think of the tone and mood 
here in these lines, you would find that the speaker is sad, and this is obvious in the last lines, when it says, uh, my soul catching its pain when sorrowing with it across the plain. So it seems that the speaker is sad, and it seems that it's at night. So what do you think? And he's just moving into his bed, crypt. Can you see this expression, crypt, coming from the verb creep? Okay, so what did he do with the curtains? Did he pull the curtains? Did he drain the curtains? Did he inspire the curtains? Did he sketch the curtains? Sketch means to draw, like to paint. Does it work? No. Can you inspire um, shades or curtains? No. Can you drain the curtains? Can you take them off? Actually, no, because it's at night and you need to go to bed. Actually, the answer would be pulled. I pulled the shades, the curtains, far down. So it's time to be isolated by putting the curtains down and creeping into bed. The last example that we have, the following text is adapted from Oscar Wilde's 1895 play, The Importance of Being Earnest. So it's a play, it's um, a dialogue between two characters, Cicely and Algernon. Cicely, have we got to part? Algernon, I'm afraid so. It's a very painful parting. Cicely, it's always painful to part from people whom one has known for a very brief space of time. The absence of old friends one can endure with equanimity. But even a momentary separation from anyone to whom one has just been introduced is almost unbearable. And the question is asking about the word endure here. Does it mean regret, persist, tolerate, or encourage? Okay, if we discuss the scene here, um, have we got to part? The word part here means to separate, to be away from each other. And then um, Elder Known says, I'm afraid so. I'm afraid so, it means I'm afraid that we have to. It's a very painful parting. It's a very painful separation. And then the reply of Cicely, it's always painful to part from people whom one has known for a very uh, brief space of time. So it's, it's not something easy at all. It's very painful for those people whom we have known for a lot of time. And even those who we haven't uh, known for a lot of time, still it's uh, painful. The absence of old friends one can endure with equanimity. What does it mean, this word equanimity? And it's one important clue to the answer. As we said, the word equanimity um, is one important clue in choosing the correct answer. Equanimity means calmness in reaction. So if you can take the feeling of absence of old friends with calmness in your reaction, okay, it means that you do not regret. Okay, why? Because the word regret does not match with equanimity. When you show regret, it's not calm at all. And then um, if we take B, persist. Persist means that you continue doing something with stubbornness, stubbornly, that you are, you do not uh, give up. Still, it's not matching with the word equanimity. Can we take tolerate? Actually, yes, we can, because tolerate means uh, that you can bear, that you can take things with acceptance. Tolerate, take with acceptance, which is so matching with equanimity. Can we take encourage? No, we cannot take encourage because still encourage doesn't match with the sad feeling. You do not encourage a sad feeling. So the answer here would be C. Finally, see you again with more of sentence completion questions. And don't forget to send your feedback and questions on English for fun English skills at gmail.com. 
until we see each other best of luck